What is up guys, welcome back to another episode of Ryan Myers Expeditions. Today we've got something really, really cool for you. I've got my brother and my dad in town visiting. Both of them are complete beginner spearfishing. JT, I believe has shot one fish. Are you at 100%? Yeah. 100%. One fish. 100 this is JT right here and this is my dad, John. So we're gonna be diving with them all week, but first step is to come to Kona Honu Divers and pick up some rental gear. It's very rare as I travel around the world to find good quality rental gear and that's what's really cool that we have right here in Kona. At Kona Hono Freedivers, all the high quality oceaner suits, long fins, low volume masts, rubber weight belts, stuff that you just don't always find when you're when you're traveling around the world to be able to rent or borrow. So we're gonna go in here right now and we're gonna get these guys set up. Only the best here at Kona Hono. Nice fins. Oh yeah. How do they feel? Amazing. You wanna take your mask down and then you put the mask on your face and just kind of lean back. And then you want to look and see, is there a gap between your face and the mask? If there's a gap, then it's probably not going to fit you very well. Throw it in the bucket if it doesn't fit. And if it does fit, you want to just keep the mask ready. Pick a few masks that you that you like, and then we'll give you some color options and uh, narrow it down to the one that you like. Look at that oceaner suit. I need one of those. Pretty good. You look like you're going to kill fish, bro. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> what do you think, Dad? It's definitely snug. That's what it's supposed to be. So we got all our gear sorted. Now we're at the beach. We're gonna take these guys, jump in the water. Kona Honu was awesome for all our gear. I'll put a link right here up above a card. Click on that, go to their site, check it out. We're gonna jump in the water here and the goal is Coles, King Coles, maybe Polanis. We're gonna shoot some stuff. But first, because this is my dad's first trip in Hawaii, we have to give him the Hawaiian power bar. Yeah. You are kidding me. No, I'm not. The thing is hot. Is it supposed to be hot? It's supposed to be hot. Yeah, that's a good one. That's how you know it's a good one. <laughs> Why is this thing so funny? Is it that gross? No, they're delicious. I eat them. I eat, I eat them at least every week. This is from. I, I want to say I have three a week. Let me see if I got this straight here. I got food from a gas station that I'm eating. Yeah, that's breakfast, lunch, dinner, whatever you want. And I eat this skin too? You eat the whole thing, eat the skin. What is that skin? What is that layer? That is it. <laughs> what is that? Eat it. It's good, right? I don't know if it's good. If I was really hungry, maybe. I really don't want it. You have, a little, you have one from a gas station. They're all from gas stations, bro. <laughs> I thought everything was homemade here. That's homemade. I love these things. No joke, I eat a couple of these a week, I love them. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, late night, coming home from the bar. Good for anything. Although, this one was a little skimpy on the spam. JT, tell me real quick about your last spearfishing experience. Well, Ryan took me on this two week sailing journey that ended up being three months. And then, uh, yeah, he pointed out a grouper and he said, he kept waving at me saying I was too far away and I took the shot and I stoned it, first try. He's 100%, so there's one fish he's ever shot in his entire life. This dude does not fish, does not hunt, does not kill anything. So, complete beginner. But to what even worse, one step worse than that is dad. Have you ever killed a fish or anything? Even like sure. fishing. I must have killed a fish sometime in my life. He cannot remember if maybe at some point in his life he killed a fish fishing. Guys, these are as beginner as beginners get. So this is gonna be a really cool example for you guys to show you what it looks like and kind of some of the steps that you go through when you first, when you're when you're fresh, when you're brand new. So we're, the main goal is King Cole with the spear gun. That's it, we're gonna practice equalizing, make sure that's happening. We're gonna, we're gonna work on our weights to make sure that's all nice and nice and neutral there where we want us to be in that 15, 20, 30 feet. We're gonna finish suiting up and we'll see you in the water. So for complete beginners, Honestly, the number one foundation is to know how to snorkel well. So that's what we first started working on. Guys, I want you on the surface, I want you floating horizontal, I want you breathing through a snorkel comfortably. This was my brother right here, and for him, he's been snorkeling with me quite a bit, and for him, we were really working on the equalization. He's always had problems with that, and so we wanted to go really, really slow. This was day one of a seven-day diving trip, and I was like, if you screw up your ears early, you're ruined. So that was the real goal. And you could see like this is one of his first dives. He's getting down to the bottom. We got a little bit of weight on him and he looked really comfortable down there. I was pretty stoked on him. Now, my dad on the other hand was gonna need a little bit of work. That looked awesome. Yeah, but you're still good. Yeah? Hell yeah. Okay, be careful with, um, I was gonna say be careful with the ears, but also you feel like you're lifted up a little bit. You want another pound? This is about the depth we're gonna hunt in. I can see the fish right over here. Okay. Do you know? Yeah. I think I'm gonna give you another pound. Okay. There's 
what you do. You take a big giant breath through the snorkel, yeah. and then you spit the snorkel out. And then don't even worry about the snorkel. And when you come up, you just come straight up in the air and you breathe. Oh, okay, you don't keep the snorkel. No. So for my dad, it was apparent that we had a little bit more work to do. And what, honestly, I really wanted to focus on him at the beginning was snorkeling. You know, that's the fundamental to freediving or spearfishing or anything. And let's practice using your fins properly. Let's practice not using your hands. Let's master equalizing and just being comfortable with just being a little bit underwater, but also being comfortable on the surface, which you must be to be able to go below the surface. <laughs> How was that? I drank a little water. Did you? Why? <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Is it? Yeah. Okay. So, don't use any hands. Okay. You know what I mean? To equalize? To, to swim with. Okay. You know what I mean? Try and just use a fence. Try and really relax before you do your dive. I'm going to put a couple pounds on you, alright? You're not going to drown on me, are you? So honestly, I kind of just wrote my dad off really fast from the beginning. You know, if you got any problems with equalizing and you're not real comfortable in the water, we're gonna have a really, really hard time getting you free diving and getting you shooting fish. So, focused on my brother, this was actually his birthday. So I was like, let's see if we can get you kind of like your really, your first real fish. Well, sweet, how you doing, Pops? I'm doing okay. Yeah, don't hurt your ears. No, but I'm okay, I mean, don't hurt your ears on the first day. No. No, the key, what you really gotta get comfortable with is being in the water. Yeah. And being flat, like all the snorkeling is great for you. Like just, just freaking snorkel, chill, whatever. Watch JT, cause he's killing it. <laughs> we'll get you out there a little deeper. How are your ears? Your ears have been no problem. Oh, uh, they're a lot better than they were last time. Yeah, yeah. I, I am starting to feel it a little bit, but yeah. I think one time I was a little late on being collected. Yeah, yeah. If you, the key is, you can be late, just turn. Like as soon as you know you're late, turn around and come back up. Oh really? Yeah, and it fixes it. The problem is when you're when you're a little bit late and then you keep going. And you're like, oh, I'm almost to the bottom, and then you start to feel the pressure, and you're like, oh, I'll just go to the bottom. Oh. You gotta turn around. It's like stuck. Yeah, what happens is every time you hurt it, it gets a little bit more inflamed. Yeah, yeah. As little, the session goes on. Yeah, yeah. Like, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. So you wanna avoid that. So you can see how much bubbles come out of his mask when he's equalizing. That's because he's trying really, really hard to not miss an equalization, and he's blowing so much air through his mask, which is, is gonna be trouble. That means if a lot of that air is coming out of your lungs, you're just not gonna have as much breath hold, or as much comfort down there as you could. So I actually pointed out a Roy to him on this dive, and I said, go down, crawl over to it. And honestly, he went down, he stayed put, he looked really good, but unfortunately for this one fish, you gotta kinda crawl over to it, or you just won't get close enough. You a spedo instead of a guado. Oh. <laughs> no, you gotta crawl. You gotta crawl up to him. You can see how bad these kicks are, and a lot of that is because of that buoyancy issue that he's dealing with. He doesn't have a lot of weight on, and because of that, he struggles to stay down, constantly kicking on the, on the bottom. And that's something that happens a lot of time to beginner divers because they're hunting so shallow, and it's so hard to be negatively buoyant on the bottom of the ocean. If it's really if it's really shallow and you're wearing a wetsuit or your body isn't naturally that negatively buoyant to begin with. To solve that, it's honestly a really delicate balance between wearing too much lead where you're you're in danger of blacking out and sinking to the bottom, and then wearing enough lead that you can still hunt properly. And that's something that you guys have gotta play with by yourself and develop and add one pound at a time, take off a pound, be really, really careful about those small, small adjustments until you kind of get it right to be comfortable hunting on the bottom, but also safe and not in the risk of blacking out and sinking back down. <laughs> JT was seriously getting the diving. There's less and less bubbles coming from his face. His equalizing is a little better. His kicks are a little better. He's getting to the bottom. He's moving slower. And I swear to God, this guy had no killer instinct. Like, I would point out a fish, he would go down, he wouldn't aim, he would just completely miss him. Like, 
he doesn't kill anything, you know? And I swear, I was like, dude, are you missing on purpose? Like, do you not want to hurt the fish? Like, are you trying to protect these fish or something? Because there was a cave full of King Coles here and we did six, eight, 10 dives. This dude probably shot like 20, 30 times his first day and didn't even nick a fish. It wasn't like we're out there like wounding fish left and right. Like we're not even getting close. Over and over back down to this same cave. And I was like, bro, they're there. I can see them every single time I go down here. And part of that is with the cave system, you've kind of got to get close enough that your eyes adjust to the darkness, but also get there slow enough that you're not spooking everything in that cave. So it's definitely a balance there of coming close, close enough in there without coming in there too fast that you just terrify everything. And one of the best ways to control that is with your left hand, to get a nice handhold on the reef or on the rocks and be able to pull yourself in or pull yourself out completely controlled. Another thing for you beginner guys that I think JT was struggling with as well is lining up where you wanna go, like planning out your dive ahead of time from the surface. If you know you wanna look in that hole right in front of you, don't land to the side of it or to the left or the right, land 10 feet in front of it. So you can land straight down on the bottom, crawl 10 feet forward to it, you haven't spooked anything and you can control your dive and get a nice shot on these fish. You can still see all those bubbles coming out of his mask. Again, something that that blows my mind now when I'm seeing it. And you'll see, I swear in the third video, these guys kill fish and it's amazing to see just how far these guys came. Watching this old footage now, it, it's, it's incredible to me that they killed stuff at the end of the week. It was pretty frustrating, guys. I mean, I take a lot of clients, I've done that for a living for the last six, eight years but they're normally not complete beginners. Normally it's somebody who kind of has a desire to go spearfishing and therefore they're they're pretty good at snorkeling. They're pretty good at, at scuba diving or free diving or equalizing or they add some of the pieces. You know, I don't think I ever in my life I've taken these complete beginners. And honestly, I say it again, but it was, it was extraordinary to see how far they came. Eventually I had to take that gun away and be like, guys, watch me, this is how it happens. And this was like my one dive of the day. come down here to the bottom, I was like, I'm just gonna shoot a Roy, we'll see, I, I need to do something. I took the gun away and I was like, guys, like, I gotta show you that this is possible, that, that you know, fish can be shot with this little spear gun doing what I'm trying to teach you guys to do. And you can see that little Roy there walking back and forth on the on the reef. I'm planning on shooting that guy, that was, that was the whole point of this dive. And then you'll see a taco kind of pop up right there, kind of see him in the background, kind of scoot right across the reef. And I was on, I was like, that was a big taco. I wanna catch it. If it's smaller, I'll take it up there. I'll just let them play with it. If it's big enough, we'll take it home. We'll cook it up because these things have quickly become like one of my favorite things to eat. You can see that that hardcore tickling motion. I've been down there for a little bit. I'm ready to go up. And I'm like, if I don't get this thing on this dive, I'm probably not gonna get it. Gotta do something, gotta salvage this day. Luckily, I managed to do it properly, get him out of his hole and get him up to the surface so the guys can play with him. I'm telling you guys, follow this three part series because you are gonna be absolutely stunned at how far these two guys get in one week. And if these guys can do it, I promise anybody can. Are you guys over it? Good for a beer? Yeah. <laughs> that was great. I'm ready for a beer. How the hell did we get out? They say, wait, we got out. All right, guys, so that was a little bit disappointing. Oh. Come on. <laughs> not just you guys, but there, there were not a lot of fish there today. It seemed like every King Cole I saw, every Cole I saw already had freaking marks in it from someone else shooting at him. We're going to have to try and find these guys better spots. I was pretty, pretty impressed with JT's diving, though. He definitely. He definitely is getting down. He's got the equalizing down. He shot about, I don't know. 100 rocks. 50 times today, 50 <laughs> yes. rocks. Did not hurt any, did not scratch a fish. Pretty fun, I felt way more comfortable with my diving. Got my ear equalization issue figured out. What about dad, what are we gonna do to dad? 
that's helpless. Did you get rocks coming out of there or what? Uh, yeah, it was a little bit of a big wave there, tossed me out on the shore. Remind me not to take them anywhere when it's not like kiddie pool, kiddie pool conditions, because it is slick out there and they still almost die. Tomorrow we're going, we're taking the tiny boat out. No idea what, what we're gonna see, but we'll see you there. All right guys, welcome back to the kitchen. We have a treat for you today. JT, are you ready? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay, unzip it. So we have previously frozen. It's been freezing for a couple days. That get it out. You're about to get soupy, so you might as well. Oh All right, in this sink, this sink right here. What the heck? All right, up and down. <laughs> no, no, put it down in the sink. Down. In the sink? Yeah, like right there. All right, just like that. Now lift. And drop. No, not all the way. Just like you know, six inches. Six inches. That's yeah. it. What do you think? Disgusting. <laughs> this is right. how you get the slime off? That's it. I want to see that like 2,000 more times. Alright dad, you're up. No, no, no. You got to do this for 30 minutes each. You're doing fine. You just started. Yeah, All right, I think we're good. Perfect. No, 30 more minutes of that. <laughs> I was already tired. See that soapy fuzz down there? That's what you're looking for, that soapy fuzz. Good times. <laughs> You guys gonna come visit again? Never again. <laughs> We're gonna Sam when you need her. Yeah, right? Alright guys, and that's all there is to it. We will uh, we'll check back with you in like another 15 minutes. How are we doing? Horrible. <laughs> Might throw up soon. <laughs> this might be the grossest thing I've ever done. <laughs> Guys, how I don't even understand. Like I don't where did I come from? Like where how how is this the same? How is this the same? My dad is up next. We'll see how if he does any better. Lift it up. What do you think? He's ugly. You never work this hard for your dinner, huh? No. You just go to the store. I think we need to go out to eat. <laughs> just what JT did. You saw him up, down, smash it in there. Move this thing out of the way. Don't worry about that. Just smash him. Just like just, just see those, lift it up. See those curls right there, guys? Those little bit of curls? That's what we're looking for, except for more. I want those curls to go up. This was not in the vac vacation brochure. You're getting the full Hawaiian experience here, man. You can't pay for this. This is priceless. All right, Dad, how you doing? What are you doing over there? I am pounding the taco. Are you done? I'm done. I'm done. I'm done with this taco. I'm done playing with it. I'm done massaging it. I'm done pounding it. Whatever you want to call it. I've had enough of this taco. I think it's time to put the damn thing in the pot. Let's cook it. All right. All right. Let's see how it feels. Ah, you did a pretty good job. Did I get rid of all the slime? You did a pretty good job, man. That's what you're looking for, guys, right there. That curl. He did a pretty decent job. We're gonna throw in the Instant Pot now. I'm not sure if he's gonna come over anymore. I'm not sure if he's ever gonna visit again, but <laughs> this is pretty cool. Gotta teach these city freaking boys what it's like to go get your own dinner, prepare it, cook it. It's cool. Check that out. Octopus came out unbelievable. Bro, Whoa. is it worth it? I don't know. That almost looks edible for once. <laughs> <Get out. laughs> Pops? All right, Look feast. That. Man, we are ready to feast today. Kind of like a, um, a scallop, a little bit. Okay, brought him in. Tastes like someone's been beating the hell out of it in a sink for two hours. <laughs> no, it's not bad. It's a little scallopy. <sighs> no appreciation here at all. <laughs> I've been slaving for hours. Hours. Mm. That was incredible. Incredible. That was pretty good. <laughs> Salty, chimichurri, a little bit of char on that cast iron pan at the end. Unbelievable. How are you guys not dying right now? That's not the best thing you've ever ate. It's pretty damn good. It's fucking good. I don't know if it was worth the effort though. But it was definitely Get good. out of here. <laughs> Pops, mm. you're eating potatoes. Mm, we're good. Good. Yeah. Whole thing's good, man. The Instapot and the chimichurri 
has changed Taco forever. I will never look at them as like, oh, maybe I'll get it, maybe I won't. I get them all. If I see one and it's big enough, I take it because it comes out like this and it's absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Like this video if you haven't already and subscribe because the next two parts in this series are pretty incredible. I shoot a big mahi. These guys turn into Woo real spear fishermen. Yeah. Again, we'll see you next time Did right it. here on Ryan Myers Expedition. I was pretty insane. I've never worked harder for fish in my entire life.